Good morning, everyone. It's special today. Family members, our condolence to you and the trust of the Lord will strengthen you as you mourn the loss of someone who means so much to you. Thanksgiving service for the late Divadi and the Mary on me. Today with me is Reverend Dawson, who used to pastor Sister Melissa. And also we have with us Pastor Michael McIntosh. And they will be sharing in the service as we proceed. We're going to be doing the opening hymn, so I ask you now to turn your programs as we begin with this wonderful hymn called Great
How you bless the Lord. Let's raise our hands and give God a shout of praise in this world.
and can say how great the Lord. Have thy own way, Lord, throughout this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Reverend Charlie and the other clergy members. I did say the last stanza, but I end up to the first stanza. <laughs> and a little bit of that is because of and that nervousness, what Auntie Mel would have requested me to be the moderator of our funeral service years ago. Years ago, she said, Son of the soil, when me dead, me want you to be the moderator. And I said, Auntie Mel, why? She said, I know you from a little boy and watch you grow and become who you are today. And I am so proud of you. And I want you to be the moderator. I said, Auntie Mel, what a task you give me. She said, even if they have to drag you to the altar, you will be the moderator. And to see this thing come into being, it's frightening. But I'm happy that I would have known her and should have influenced my life and so many of you. Amen. And before we go any further, just clap your hands with the light, lay back and come out. We just be proud that she lived and lived a life that was pleasing to God and would have used her Godly principle to teach others, to show others the way to live. And so we go into our celebration for our life. And our first lesson will come to us from 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 through 18, be done by Sheldon, Minot, and Cecil Williams, grandson and son-in-law. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, then also we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever 
be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's read that again. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. 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 We have just read a portion of God's holy word. We honor by saying, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, word without time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and we are going to be doing it in this part of the program. So we're going to have a tribute now from Charlotte Inwarity, daughter. Then the remembrance and tribute from Merlin Williams, daughter. And then Simone Daly, granddaughter. And then I'll come back and do the rest of the part. So we now have Say Auntie Mel. So everybody say Auntie Mel. 
A little story about my mother, which she told me, she said she was pregnant with me at 19 years old. And every time somebody would meet her and said, you're going to have a girl, she would be happy for the whole day. But if somebody meet her and say she's going to have a boy, she said, I quarrel all day. <laughs> you tell him that I'm going to have no boy. I don't want no boy. I ask God for a girl, and I go to have a girl. So her desire was to have girls. She loved girls. Praise be to God. And so that's how it started my mother relationship and me. She wanted me as a girl. What I would say would be so much to say, but I'm gonna break it down because I have a song I'd like to sing. As many of you know, that years ago, I had an accident by a bus. I was 18 years old, going to school. And that, even now to try to come up there, I have problems with my leg. And so, my mother, she was behind me like, I, I cannot even explain it. She, all the way, all the way, this leg took me two years and two months to get better. She never left me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. She got me even into the university hospital in Kingston. So I could have a skin graft so this car would not show up that bad. But by the time I got home, as the days goes by, it began to eat and eat until the whole thing melted off. So it left the scar from between my big toe to my ankle. But let me tell you something. The morning before I went to school, my mother hugged me and kissed me and said, I love you, I'll see you later. And I'm telling you something, when she heard. But anyway, with God's help, a time I was creeping on my knee, I, I wasn't able to walk. And when I started to walk, I was pulling this leg behind me because I forget how to walk. And through it all, she never left me. When it finally got better, I said to my mother, this is it. I do not want to stay in this co country no more because I don't like country, I don't like insects. I want to go to Montego Bay and find a job because my schooling was cut short. And so, you know what she did? She went to Montego Bay. She find the room. She furnished the room with everything I need in the room. And she come and she said, come, let's go. And she take me and put in that room. She pays the rent every month until I got a job. She sent a box of supply every week by Uncle Sam Trump every week for me until I got a job. My mother is the best man in the whole world. Amen. And I'm telling you now, and when I said it, my, I didn't know my mother was listening. I didn't know she was outside. She was outside the university hospital trying to find me. And I was telling the next patient that my mother is the, my mother is the best man in the whole world. She said, what? Not, that's Peggy Boy's death. <laughs> and so she searched until she found me. So she know that I said she's the best mother and she is the best mother in the whole world. Glory be to God. And my mother, two things in this world that is important to my mother is to be a child of God and her family. It's the two greatest accomplishments that my mother could accomplish it, and she did it with hard work, patience, and joy. Yes. Glory to God. So I just want to let you know that, as some of you know, 
how wonderful my mother is and to show it by coming out. So now I want to leave the song with you as, before I step down. I live each day in victory because of the one who lives in me. I find every promise he ever made, Jesus will keep. Walk by my side in desert dry, love me and help. from the Triumphant Church of God in Canada, in Toronto specifically, under the leadership of Bishop Jasper J. Park and Pastors Anderson and Brown. First, I must say thanks to everyone for your support during Mama's illness and death. To the pastor and brethren of the Retrieve New Testament Church of God, and to the Campbell Memorial Church for facilitating Mama's celebration of life. To my nephews, Ron, 
Devon, and may I also say Jermaine, who play the role of daughter, grandsons, and son. God bless you to Marjorie, who stood by her, who helped her in her last days. Marjorie, thank you. Sister Sharon, specifically, TT, who has been there. She mentioned that Sister Sharon is her postmaster. <laughs> she mentioned TT. She has never been out of produce. Some more the things that she loved the most. God bless you. Growing up, Mama was the primary breadwinner for the family. Our father's work was seasonal, but Mama was throughout the year. We weren't rich, but Mama taught us how to satisfy with the things we had. She toiled very hard, walking over rocks and valleys to maintain the family. Of Claremont, to be specific. I must say to the residents of Jericho and the surrounding areas, you put clothes on her backs and you put what Mama gave us, the best thing she gave us, this legacy. I'm going to this church, this assembly, church, this assembly passing the retreat New Testament church. And at that time, the
the 22nd of this month would be exactly seven years with the instructions that should be carried out. And I sing the song for a funeral. There are so many songs that I could my mother and obedient to her. It is the right thing to do. Sometimes I think mama is wrong, but because she's my mother, I obeyed her. Glory to God. I want to sing this song. I do the verses and then the chorus. How sweet and I will never record them. No one day. did not just serve God because she wanted to, she served him. I just want to play this little clip before I start. I won't be long with you. Just to hear her voice again.
understand and know that we're just sojourners on this planet. We're not here to stay. And let her life be a reminder and not that we lived this life and didn't make it. Let her that we must get to him faster than we should. And if the day or the hour when it's time to leave this world, can you imagine hearing the trumpet and some of us don't hear it? What was the point? So let me encourage you that even though we have lost a soldier, she's dancing with heaven right now. She's dancing with the angels right now. She's not suffering anymore. So let this funeral be a reminder to us that we must be at the right place with God if we want to see her again. As I travel through this pit, there is a praise. Come on and sing it.
above her head and said, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. This verse to affirm everybody who came in contact with Sweet and Dandy. Sweet and to have some words in that moment. It, I, mean, I mean, grew up not really appreciating that, but now we learned that she was affirming us, telling us we are royal, we are good, and we can be blessed. Yeah. That was my title for her. Yeah. And so we rejoice today that Auntie Mel would have touched our life yeah. in a meaningful way. Yes. And so we give God thanks. What a day! Just come and have a show now with you. We are in the with a selection from Stephanie Senior. And then we'll have some laying of roses. Then we'll go to the second lesson, Revelation 21, verses 4 through to 6. Amelia Dennis, great granddaughter. And then a tribute from Ovo. From Reverend Allen, the discipline go into these tributes. I'll come back to you. So Sister Stephanie Senior will come to us now. I want to sing, but I let me say we want to hold one time. But I just let me just say this, Auntie Mel. And she said, I can't manage it. And I helped her, and she said, That's what I want. She said, I only want to eat my orange. And she said, Lucy, I am ready. So every time you talk to her, she's ready. And I believe her soul is at rest. It's a friend of mine. And Auntie Mel, I see her. Yeah. 
Let's clap your hands and enjoy for life. Really. After that, we now have our second lesson, and then a tribute from our friend Amelia Dennis. Can we worship the Lord? Praise Can we worship the Lord again? The Lord. Amen. It's a time of celebration for a life well lived. Amen. I want to recognize the presence of our moderator, Reverend Mackin Touch, Reverend Jolly, the host pastor and former pastor, uh, Reverend Dawson. Yes, I'm so happy to join you up there and all the members of the community, the church, those who have traveled near and far to be here. Amen. I greet you well in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to firstly extend my sincere condolences to the bereaved. Whatever your relation was with her, she is going to be with the Lord. Amen. Sister Melda, Affectionately, I called her. She was a mother to me. I, I got saved early. We, we, were, we could sing well. My, my sisters, along with her, we would go to, to rallies and we would sing and we would get encore and all of that. I think that's the first time I met her at a retreat. And she would always, when we, when, when we sang, she would come and she would hug us and you know she would put something in our hands and so forth and her life really impacted me a lot i saw her as a true example of real christianity Amen. she she was very very she prayed when she testified you could feel that energy that comes from her she really was really genuine really genuine stalwart of the faith and I really admire she influenced my life so much and even when I went away and I came back and I told her I was now the district overseer she was she was very very elated to know that I've grown in the church and I've excelled so much and I, I really really want to say I am happy to be here happy to share in this ongoing service and I trust and hope that all of us would have taken taken a leaf out of her book. Amen? Amen. We would have taken leave a legacy that we all should to our generation. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you, Reverend. I Storyteller. Yes. Yes. You know that? Yes. When you tell your story, you tell it stay with you forever. And there is a WhatsApp group that name Jerry type in their influence and impact. And 
we have some beautiful photographs of Antinem that was taken from by Professor Clinton Hutton. Antinem's life impacted his life. And so, Professor Hutton, we are asking you to give a two-minute tribute. I know you weren't prepared for it, but you can prepare yourself after these three sets of tributes to come for Antinem. So we have three tributes in this order. Leroy Taylor, family friend, Garen Humphrey, family friend, and Hazel Shalom, family friend, and then you take Professor Hunt. So you can make it as short and spicy as Auntie Mel would say, short and sweet. <laughs> short and sweet, really. Good afternoon, the church. Um, we are here to celebrate the life of a phenomenal woman. Amen. A woman that I can say has no Peggy, I don't, um, you gave her a version of Aunt Mel that I didn't know. But the version I know or that I will give is this. No, Aunt Mel and my late mother, yes. Sister May. Yes. And by the way, um, today is the eve of her 100th year of birth. So I know she is there waiting for her and continue their great work as Christians. No, my version is that because Auntie Mel and my mother were such great friends, as a matter of fact, I would say they were sisters. So I always see myself as Auntie Mel's nephew. As a matter of fact, and whenever I go visiting with her, she would say, Baby son, you come, let me feel your ears. Auntie Mel loves heirlooms. She's a physical person. So she don't only show affection through words and her kindness. If she is into you like that, she gets very physical with you. And that's a great treat. Now, there's so much I can remember about Auntie Mel. Because we're talking about almost 70 years. And why I say that? I just said that Aunt Mel was a physical person. So I can just imagine while my mother bore me, pregnant and all, Aunt Mel would come and say, Sister me, let me feel how the boy I look. Is <laughs> that kind of a person. Very loving, very spiritual, very kind. And I tell you some stories a little a couple of stories I don't want to be long about Auntie Mel and my late mother. They did the same thing for life now. They both sew and they both sell clothing. And they peddle their wares on Saturdays in the Jericho Square. I guess the older folks here remember when Jericho was a thriving market on a Saturday. And this is we don't have again. I would say this is some of the ills of centralization. Because the small districts around had strong economies at the time. Now, Auntie Bella and my mother, she sold, they sold things side by side. Same things, you know? Not different. Frog, panty, everything like that. All of them the same thing. Yes. And I tell you how these two people operate. If it's some reason that Auntie Mel have to leave her pan. Somebody comes to buy, she sells one for fear and sell one for Mama Woman. Yes. This is Auntie Mel. Yes. They were very close. Yes. So, but I know Auntie Bell, as you just said, well, 
is a person of many stories. So if you go to visit her, you make sure you have time. Because she's going to be holding you for a protracted period. Right? She encourages you. She tells you some stories. As a matter of fact, Andy may tell you some stories sometimes. When I sit back and remember them, I really have to have a good laugh. Because here's some woman who she went through tribulations. Stuff happened to her. And the way she internalized it. It's, I would say, not normal. I mean, the ordinary woman who flare and to me take it to that smile. She tells some beautiful stories. So today, all I heard before, Peggy, Joy, girl who couldn't be here, my sister, Gwen, and Brother Douglas couldn't be here because Auntie Bell was auntie to us all. When my mother was out of town, we stayed with her. Girl and my and my and Gwen and Peggy very close from those times. She sent me something to read for Auntie Bell. And I think she took these verses from the great book of Proverbs. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above precious stones. She stretches out her hands to the poor, yeah. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. Strength and honor are in her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Many daughters have done virtuously, but you, Antibel, excellest them all. Favor and deceit. Sorry, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall always be praised. Antibel, Wagu, rest in peace and be light of the Almighty perpetually shine on you. Thank you very much. Let everything that has birth praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, can you shout hallelujah three times for our sister Mel as she likes to shout hallelujah. church, I greet the pastors, I greet the elders, the visiting members, and the family which is in bereavement. Hallelujah. Greetings. 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 Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Ah, Sister Melda, Sister Melda, Sister Melda. A destiny helper, a mother, a friend, and an icon has passed away. A woman who spoke nothing but good things over the lives of youngsters. Yes. Even if it seems as though nothing good would come out of that child, Miss Melga would be sowing seeds of goodness over the lives of those children. And she would water the seeds that she has sown over the child's life whenever she comes in contact with the child with some encouraging words like hey my son or my daughter good morning all you do god bless you queen fierce you just nice so oh sister Mary. My mother told me that when I was a baby, wherever Miss Melda saw her with me, she would always be declaring good things over my life and my future. 
and I will quote some of the things. You do become a good little boy. And you don't come take care of your mother and build her a house. And every time she happened to see me, she would utter the same words over my life. And while I was growing up, and I came to the realization that she was one of my destiny helpers, wherever that I saw her, I would feel blessed. And everything she declared over my life is coming to pass. I did help my mother to build a house, and uh, I did listen to my mother and my father since I was going to high school up until today. When my son was born, a scripture came to me, which a scripture came to me from Luke chapter 2. There was a just and a devoted man by the name of Simeon from Jerusalem. The Lord told him that he would not die. He would not die until he saw Christ. And when it came to pass and he saw Christ, he said, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. And in closing, the Lord told me to take my son to Miss Melda for her to bless him as she did to me. And my wife and I brought the baby to her and she blessed him and we worship the Lord. Rest in peace, Miss Melda. Rest in peace.
Brothers and sisters, greetings. Greetings. I've been coming to this place when I was a little boy. My first big school was right behind there. Um, the, the first observation is that I have never seen, I've been to a lot of funerals here. I've never seen the church so full. And that is testimony to Miss Melda. Uh, I have known Miss Melda practically all my life. She and my mother were friends. The thing about Miss Melda is that she is such a pleasant, ever smiling, yes. kind person. Yes. That's the first thing. And young people can learn, and I've learned a lot from her. And, um, and the thing about it, even when you're not thinking or very conscious of it, there's a way in which adults need to know that it is not even by talking to them at times, but just being around them as adults, that you shape the lives of young people. Yes. And Miss Melda has done that to me. Miss Melda was an excellent dramatic storyteller. Excellent storyteller. And I remember that about her. She was born in the same year as my mother. Erga. And um, over the years, I've been taking photos of her. And I remember, I think it's probably a black and white photo. She, um, she tells me that I need to take a picture of her to put on her when she passed, to put on the program. That's a long while ago she told me that. Long, long, long while ago. So when I hear from her daughter um, that about singing that song and all of that, you see the type of consciousness of Miss Milda, who had had a long, good life. A good life does not mean a life in material richness. We, we need to understand that. Right? And Miss Melda lived a good life so that I can live a life myself. She helped to shape my life. As there are many people in Jericho, my life would be nothing without the people of Jericho. I can say that publicly. And where I, wherever I go, Jericho is with me. And that's why I come back here all the while. Right? Persons like Miss Melda, you go and look for them. Right? And um, daughter over there, I mean, <laughs> this is the first time I've probably seen her in 60 years or so. Right? A long, long while. Right? But Miss Melda is a good person. And we must revere our elders. Um, they shape our lives so that we can shape the lives of the next generation and the next generation. It is, it is very important to do that. That's how we build community, right? So um, she has passed, but she has shaped us. And therefore, there's a song, you know, there's a song done by the Wailers, and the lead singer, of this song was Bunny Wheeler. And in part of that song, it says, Live for yourself, you live in vain. Live for others, and you will live again. Yes. Right? And that's Miss Melda. Yes. Right? So um, we express our love. To her, I mean, I saw her recently. I photographed her in, in August. Yes. I took a number of photos of her in August. But I've been photographing her over the years. 
as I've done with other persons from, from Jericho. But especially those who help to shape you. There are some, sorry I don't have any photo of them, but I probably have photos of more than anybody else of Jericho. And I start to take elders first. And um, what is important, that's how you build community. You, you keep a record of the people who have helped us to journey on this way, in this way, in this thing we call life. So I'll say to you and Miss Mel, one love, one heart. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Houghton. And you get for yourself that his life was shaped by Antimel. We now have the remembrance from Sister Marlene Patterson, a church sister. And then a selection from the Campbell Memorial United Church. But before she comes, I must on behalf of Reverend, Reverend Lenoir Clark and the Board of Elders from this church express their condolences to the family of Auntie Mel. Uh, she was a great friend of Reverend Clark and she would visit here as often as she see fit. So on behalf of that section of this church, we express our condolences to you and our prayers and our strength are with you on this. So we now sit and listen to remembrance from Sister Marie Patterson. And then Campbell Church will come to us. Good morning again. I am this afternoon now? Yes. All right, we've gone over. All right, thanks be to God for being here today. I am having mixed feelings because Sister Melba, my mother, my friend, I remember when I left her at once, she called me and she said, Remember, say, when the day come, God will ask you why you left. Because it's going to be used against you. Yes, she always said that. And remember your testimony. Before she went into the hospital, I called her Thursday and she said, come me pick me, come visit me, if God spare life, tomorrow. And I said, yes, I am coming. She said, me said, tomorrow, if God spare life. And I said, yes, I'm coming. She said, me said, tomorrow, if God spare life. And I said, yes, Sister Mel, I already told her that I'm coming. She said, yes, come. And when we parted on the phone, I said to my mother, no, when we were talking, I said, Sister Mel, you know, so good. She said, me all right, man, not because me lie down. So I said, no, you know, so and so good. She said, all right, come tomorrow. And I went the Friday. We spoke, but when I saw her, I put my hand on her shoulder and I couldn't say a word. I was just there knowing that something was about to happen. So I sat there and looked at her. But before I left, she said, me want to go home. And I said to her, no man, you have more days to go. She said, no, me no want more time. I am ready to go to my father. And when she said that, I got up and I pulled her hand and we prayed. And I said to her helper, she's not going to be for much longer because I could feel that she's going and I could look at her face, her face changed totally. So I know she was going. But we miss you, Sister Melda, a lot. I promised um, the Saturday when 
I told the helper to call me if it gets worse. And she called me the Saturday morning and I went. And when I went, I said, let's take her to the hospital. I don't want her dying here. So we took her to the hospital and I came back up. I didn't get the chance to go back to visit her before she died. But I know she's gone home. So my tribute from the church is saying, remembrance is saying, honorable and upright in all her ways, faithful and true to the end of her days. We can find a, who can find a virtuous woman? For price is far above rubies. She stretched her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Her children arise up and call her blessed and praises her. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that fear the Lord, she shall be praised. A woman of God, charismatic, energetic, classy, she can dress up, I'll tell you, courageous, affable. Sister Melda Antibel, Mother Melda, as she was affectionately called, has been an active member of the rich New Testament Church of God for over 50 years. She has been a great inspiration during her tenure there. She can be remembered as a superintendent for the Sunday school for many years. As children, we would have to make sure she, we know our goal and text, and she's going to ask us what we learned from Sunday school. A very interactive Sunday school teacher, choir leader, a treasurer for the ladies' ministry. Sister Melda was a woman of order, and she likes to see the church looking good. She doesn't like chaka chaka. And of such, she ensures that church looks presentable for worship. She's a team person. She calls the finance team once there is something to be done to the church, whether inside or outside. She calls her team, make plans, and get it done. When called upon to share the word, she would do so willingly and boldly. She is one of two longest serving members of the church before retiring. Auntie Mel was a motivator, an encourager, a friend, a confidant, someone you can relate to about any issue and you can rest assured you won't hear it back. She has a special love for young people and of such would not want to see us down or sad. After the visit to church in May of last year, she worships, sings, and dances and shares her testimony. Two weeks before her passing, she said goodbye to me. She made a vow many years ago to serve the Lord at the Noel Holmes Hospital, and she ended her journey at the Noel Holmes Hospital. She has fought a good fight. She has kept the faith. And has laid up for her a crown of life. I conclude with a summary of her testimony to her children, grandchildren, other family members, church family, from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Goodbye. Her favorite songs were, um, Your Grace and Mercy Brought Me Through. And the other one she would sing, I have made my preparation for my final destination. Amen. And so those are the songs that she would do. Every time she come to church, she would say, me make me preparation, you know? Me write on me eulogy. Me tell me, me don't want me to be then come. They have a problem to know anything. Me write it, put it on. Me pack me things. The hospital. Me pack me things where we want to bury in. Nobody now to search for nothing. But that is Sister Mel. I remember one Sunday somebody said, every Sunday you come to church, you say the same thing. But she was ready to go. What would Sister Melda, Mother Melda, Auntie Mel, you have left an indelible mark on all of us. Sleep on, beloved. God only knows the best. In life, we love you dearly. In death, we do the same. May our soul rest in peace. Life perpetual shine upon us.
God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me say, Auntie Mel was a very loving, dedicated person. I remember Auntie Mel as we were growing up. She would always come home to the house and she would sit with my grandmother and my mother and they would talk. I remember when my grandmother was sick. Auntie Mel would come on every Sunday evening and she would sit down and she would say, Aunt Alice, Miss Alice, don't worry yourself. And Ma would say, we call her Ma. Ma would say, Auntie Mel, me a right to the man. Make me praise God. Make me praise God. And sometimes we look and we see Miss Ivy come on and Miss Ivy would carry Tati and Jill and the one of us would sit down in the room and we would pray and we would sing. Sometimes, Ma would say, call them girl down at the yard. And we would tell Ma and Nama and she, and the whole of us would gather together and we would cook and we would eat. And we will go on until when our aunt Bae sick and Bae was there and my mother said to her, Our room, we say, what is the sun? The twenty, the seventh, the seventh, the seventh, and she was very sick. So Auntie Mel said, now they make her watch you. The seventh plan, the seventeenth plan. So I want more seven living in the in the month, and that was the twenty seventh. So Auntie Mel said, come and go on the twenty seventh, and that we have to sleep around here. We have to say bye, say goodbye, and we were around there, we were around by bedside, and we were looking, and we see her. Taking the bread, taking the bread. And at quarter to nine in the night, she takes her last bread. And her people say, Thank you, Jesus. May get me desire. May sit by when you say goodbye. And then my mother and us were walking and girl and girl. And we were always close to my family. And she always close to everyone. Sometimes when Auntie Bell sit, she'll say, Nani Titi Breast? Nani Titi Breast? And she would walk me. Sometimes she said to me, Bill, you know what say? Me love you. Me love you. And she would rub up the cheek and she would touch up my breast. And would laugh. She always had good things to say. Not only to my family, but to all the children in, in Morris. Girls and boys, she always had encouraging words to say to us. And to the church, when she comes to Jericho Church, she would praise our God. And I remember she said to Reverend Clark one day, when we dead, we the baby room. Give them the church, the one, the church, the one. My parents are to be here that came on the moral church. This is where we grew up, you know. But I'll go to the church of God. I want to be here for the funeral. My parents will be here. Because guess what? My church can't hold the people in. So give, give them. Give me family the permission to keep my funeral service here and would laugh. So before she even pass off, we know that at any time she pass off, her funeral service will be here, right here. And we all love her, we all miss her, and just let me say to you, all of us as young people, community members, remember Auntie Mel, remember her encouraging words to all of us, and let us try to live together 
as one in unity and serve God. afternoon to all of us here and everybody is talking about that email. I can't stretch it out but guess what I would like to tell you this afternoon that when I was small growing up they used to call me Trey because I was very thin but my mom used to visit Auntie Mel I, I was like lived in Claremont I grew up in Claremont I came to Jericho when I was about 25 or so my mom used to come to Jericho at Auntie Mel to go shop. That's the only store I knew at that time. And when she went to buy things, you know, the prettiest panties, Auntie Mel. You know the trimmings one them? <laughs> well, it's that I used to wear. And I was so sure. So when I go to school now, I run and when I run in a flap me dress, and everybody sees it. Auntie Mel panties, they were very pretty. So we remember Auntie, Auntie Mel in a very special way. In the great triumphant morning, when we hear the bridegroom cry, and the dead in Christ shall rise, we will be changed to life immortal in the twinkling of an eye, and meet Jesus in the sky. Lady, are you a one foot short lady? Don't have no 
And when Carol the fish and bomb me come she knows that I buy you. Auntie Meg was a good woman to explain herself to my mother and come and find and say that I show you the fish and bomb to know that she find my mother. Auntie Meg was a good woman. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Auntie Mel, everybody wants a piece of Auntie Mel. I want to say about Auntie Mel. That's the impact, the influence, and the inspiration. We continue with our tribute, with a selection from the Rosetta New Testament Church of God, all the way in Saint Anne. And then we'll ask you to go into your purse, your wallet. We don't have any point of sale machine so there's no card we take cash so go in your purse your wallet and um, make a donation to a worthy cause to the after him and we will sing lustily but uh, now we will have the Rosetta New Testament Church of God with the item. Put your hands together and welcome them. Shall we bless the Lord? Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We can still be praised to God. Hallelujah. And the years of
Tinsel, we will sing. I think I heard Sister Molly mention one of Auntie Mel's favorite songs, Your Grace and Mercy. And um, I'm glad it has come to us. Your grace and mercy.
welcome to you, my brothers and sisters. Greetings. Good day. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. And today is no exception. So we give God thanks for the life of our dear departed sister, Sister Melda, who has touched many lives in this community of Jericho and its environment. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for life. We thank you for the breath that you breathe into us so we can be human beings. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for providing our basic requirements. We thank you for the roof of above us. We thank you for the clothes on our backs. And we thank you for the shoes on our feet. And even though they might not be new, they are functional. So this afternoon, we give you thanks that we are able to assemble in this fashion to give you thanks. We ask that you will continue to bless us. We ask for a special blessing on the members of the bereaved family. Because you are God, you are our refuge and strength. You are our provider and you are our protector. And there is none like you. So again we say thank you Lord. And we promise that we'll continue to praise you because you're worthy to be praised. And he who has breath. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Elder Kenwood Summer of this church. And uh, we continue with our celebration of the life of Auntie Mel. It's sort of awkward to say Ivani in Warrity. So I just say Auntie Mel. Amen. Amen. So we'll have a selection from the Retrieve New Testament Church of God. And then the next voice you will hear is that of our minister with the sermon. And then afterwards you will listen to the eulogy from Donna Holt. And then we'll have a prayer for the bereaved family from our Reverend D. Dawson. And then we'll give you some instructions. So we we'll have selection, retrieve the testament church. Then we'll have the word that God has laid on our minister's heart, Reverend Jolly, and then the eulogy, Donna Holt, and then bereave, prayer for the bereaved family, Reverend D. Dawson. Thank you, and God bless you. There was once a time when in my heart I was condemned to die. I was walking in my sinful way. Jesus paid the ransom for my soul. I made this world to light when he holds me as he
Let us praise the Lord. Come on, let me hear you praise the Lord. Man. Praise the Lord. 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 Be delighted to hear us giving God praise. Amen. Amen. I want to greet us in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Reverend Bishop Dawson, I'm moderator, and I see our dear friend. Andrew in your counselor, our deputy mayor. I greet you well in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Family members, our prayers are with you, and we assure you that Sister Melda was loved and she'll be really missed when a church like we see God retrieve lose a member like this. Can I say it's a big blow? <laughs> we have really lost someone who meant so much to us. This Amelia was not just a member, you know. She was a member. Someone who loved and dedicated her life to that church. I have only been a pastor for a short period of time, for five years, but I've known her over 20 years, going on 30 years. Like Reverend Holly, we grew up small in the church, go to fasting, district fasting, go to rallies and all these things, and you couldn't miss Sister Melia at all. She was like a shining star. The way she dressed and the way she carried out her, her, her ministry. Um, she was just a beautiful, beautiful soul. Amen. And she'll be greatly missed in that, that uh, congregation. Amen? Amen? But she did her best. Amen. She gave service a hundred and hard percent. Yes. She didn't hold back anything. And she served and served very, very well. And I tell you, she would be great. She, she, she just leave a mark. I don't know how that void will be filled or if it can be filled. But Samela was a person she come to church and the, 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 the light switch now work. She abide the light switch. Yes. That's her. Yes. If she come to church and the fan is not working, she go and buy a fan. Yes. All right? Yes. And, and the members can tell you I'm not making anything up. All right, she was that kind of a person. And she, she come to church and me no look so jolly. She want to know how come me no look so jolly. <laughs> and by service over, somebody that will make sure some me jolly. Amen. All right, because I don't know if I want to preach a sermon. They have a sermon on here, but I look at my faces and some of the folks and I see them falling asleep. Yeah, I don't just jump up and stand up in front of the congregation and look at them. And while I was sitting there, I, I realized that some of the folks are um, falling off to sleep. So um, let, let's, let's do a short thing so that you won't fall asleep on me. Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Next week, blood does paralyze. I, I, we'll have to be back here for Sister Penny. So you know what is going on at the Retrieve Church. We have lost two stalwart through two members who have impacted that church profoundly yes. and the community of Jericho at large. I remember picking up the Western Mirror some time ago, uh, and I, I think it was sometime last year, and there was Sister Mel being honored and, and fitted by a group here in Jericho. Yes, yes. And then I, I look at her smile and her face, and I said to myself, Sister Melda deserves every drop of it. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes. All right, I'll talk to her, so let me. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you put the mic in your hand for preacher, they will go on and on. No, Sister Joy? Yes, you will go on and on. God bless you, God bless you. Amen. But I want to leave a short word with us. Short word with us. If I must die, let me die the death of a righteous. 
The argument considerable, and if we consider it, there are some similarities and also some significant difference in death of the righteous and that of the wicked. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the life of our dear sister. One that has given so much to her church, to her family, and to her community. We ask, mighty God, that you bless this word to our hearts, that it brings inspiration and encouragement, that it strengthens the family, and it bless those of us who are here today. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, I'm going to try my best to cut this short. Balaam is one of the greatest tragedies of the Old Testament. He was a gentile prophet of God who lived in peace around him. Mesopotamia. Because he was afflicted with the common melody of covetousness, he sold out to Balaam, a pagan Moabite king, who urged him to curse the Israelites as they made the way towards Canaan. But you and I know that you can't curse what God has blessed. Amen. 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 So it didn't happen. But he came up with another scheme that if he could get the Israelites to do something else, then that God would punish them. So he get them to marry to the Moabite women. And therefore, they suffered at the hands of God. But like I said, in one of his prophecies, he made a profound statement. And it contains much food for thought. As I said earlier on, he exclaimed, Let me die the death of the righteous. And let my last end be like his. Numbers 23 and 10. When we consider the matter, really, there are some similarities and some significant differences the death of the righteous and that of the wicked in similarities in a number of ways death is identical for both the wicked and the good first death is inevitable to every one of us for the scripture says appointed unto man wants to die but after death comes the wicked. Secondly, the uncertainty of death is for every one of us. We cannot tell directly what time of day or month we are going to die. But we do know that we are going to die. Death can take us at any stage in our life. In infancy, adolescence, or even in the prime of our life, yeah. death can show up. Third, for both the prepared and the unprepared, death has the same physical phenomenon. All speak of death as a departure when he writes that the desire is to remain. But then he exclaimed that when he departs, when he departs, be in the presence of the Lord. Fourthly, the Bible teaches that both good and the ungodly are conscious after death. In fact, the scripture does not suggest that death cause any change in the composition or the nature of human spirit. And if you look at Luke 16, and 25. You will see where it speaks of the death of Lazarus and that of Diodes. And they both were conscious. 
Because one exclaimed that they were in torment, and the other said, the Bible said that they were comforted. First, God's attitude toward the two groups has great contrast. Lord, the testimony of the psalmist, precious in the sight of Jehovah is the death of the saints. And the other hand, as I did say, the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Today, the blood is still warm in our veins. And you can make the decision right here, right now. Amen. Whether you want to die as a wicked or you want to die the death of the righteous. Yes. It's up to you. Yes. For the Bible declares, as we just read, precious in his sight is the death of the righteous. The sun never before since the Miller passes. I had the opportunity of going down to the hospital to look for her. Her eldest daughter, her dear, and her grandson, Stama, looking around. Stama was there, and another of her grandson was there. Stasina was there. Because before I moved to that, I'd rather die the death of the righteous than the death of the wicked. Our brother exclaimed that when you talk about living a good life, it does not necessarily mean material things, but touching the lives of the people, whether it is in Jericho, Maris, or retreat. That is the last thing that is living many, many more years after you have existed this life. Good name. Good life. A good legacy. When you leave that behind, your name will continue for generations and generations to come. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, in calling it short, we're dear with Sister Melda. What's her name? May I ask you? Peggy was combing her hair. Stama was wiping her mouth and giving her some water to drink. Yes. Sister Melda said, Peel me a orange. I'm just going to go straight to the death of the righteous. Yeah. And Sister Mella squeezed that orange and, and she sucked it and said, Why are you so sweet? Yeah. Peel me another one. Yes. And they peeled her another one. Yes. And said, Middle orange, you know? Yes. Middle orange. Yes. And she hit the orange and enjoyed herself and her hair was being combed. And after it was finished, I said to her, it's time to pray. Yes. But before I could begin the prayer, Sister Bella said, you ready? Yes. I am ready to go. Yes. I don't want no holy for body. That's what she said. Yes. Me don't want no holy for body. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Uh, everything is all right. Yes. Everything is fixed up. Yes. I am ready to depart. Oh God, I'll help you today. Oh, that's confidence. Her mind was made up. She was prepared. And she said, oh, I don't want your bad. I don't want no sadness. When you keep a funeral service faster, me no want no daddy daddy. Lord, God help us. Hallelujah, somebody. I come to a doctor with some other church folk uh, that have come to their bedside uh, and have put hand on the head. Hello. You think every church people are dead? Jesus. God, God, you shame. Yes. Jesus. Right, you know, I'm going to be too good. 
Amen, somebody. But some church folk passing and they're going and making the transition and they're ashamed for people to know that you are the pastor. But Lord Jesus, when Sister Melda said, I don't want to weep about him because everything ready, you should look at Stama and he says, Stama, think from yourself. Amen, somebody. And then what you want to leave with us, son of our people today, fix up yourself. All those are on the choir, fix up yourself. All those of us are on the pure, fix up yourself. Those in the audience, fix up yourself. Amen, somebody. Oh, God, she didn't stop here. She said, fix up yourself. Because I want to see you on the other side. Also, fix up yourself. You are here today and you are not seeing and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Fix up yourself. If you are in the church and you are playing church, fix up yourself. If you are the whole side, fix up yourself. If you are on the drums and the keyboard and you are not ready yet, fix up yourself. And somebody give you know, a praise to God. from the hospital, oh God almighty, but then when I was about to leave, she said, come here pastor, I want you to sing this song with me, oh she said, my home is in heaven, can I get from here, can I get from here, oh somebody help me sing this song, she said, my home is in heaven, just waiting for me, and when I reach here, oh how can I be? Only a conscious mind, 
only a confident mind. Only someone who is rooted and grounded in God who has said to us, call me back and say, before you leave past, I want us to sing. She held her hand and she knew every note, she knew every line. She was not stuttering, she was not buckling for the words, she sang it line for line. I wrote, oh God. So even today, your hearts are heavy. You may have shed your tears, but when you know that your mother and your grandmother, oh God, went out like this, I cannot go ahead to say when my time comes. Hallelujah. When my time comes. Oh, I, I, I want to have that assurance yes. in my mind that my home is in heaven. Just waiting for me. Like some folks said earlier on, she had been saying that for quite some time. Over five years since I got to retreat, she said everything lined up. Can I put it that way? In other words, the preparation is already made. She come to church and she was happy one Sunday afternoon and she said, Pastor, no, no worry, don't fret over me. Everything, I make up, I write my, 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 my eulogy, everything, the songs have been chosen, everything is already prepared. No wonder she could sound. And I thank God that I met her. I thank God yes. that I had an opportunity yes. to be your pastor. Yes. Every pastor up here so yes. would like to have a member like that. Yes. I have the church with only members like that. Amen. How many somebody? Amen. Ask them if you think I like me. Yes. Every single one of them yes. would like to have a, a, a church filled wow. with just members like Sister Benita. Yes. You know, I'm going to go that mother like it. That's the way we have love it. So my brothers and sisters and family members, as you grieve, as you mourn, I want you to be comforted this afternoon by the way she will leave and departed this life. She was not worried about one single thing. And only your sister can tell you, when she hold the orange, and when she suck the orange, and says, Stop, why? Are you sweet as it? Peel one more day. Uh, <laughs> I'm a peel one more. I will just suck it. She said, I love her ring, you see? Oh, God Almighty. But remember, Stan, her last words to you fix up yourself. God bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
You can compare and you can also contrast. So my reason for saying this is, I was always in touch with Miss Melda because you know I have a, I gave her a um, great grandson, right? And then the first one, yeah. And then you all know that Mrs. Mrs. Green, Jericho Primary School, raised me. And so after her death, I had the opportunity, much privilege, to have gone and lived with Miss Melda. Such a beautiful soul. So when everybody come up here and talk the same thing, all of us can't lie, right? right? Because it's plenty of times me have to run from the breast story, you know. I should say breast, me run God. <laughs> The road. All right, so, so Auntie Mel, we think about you always. We talk about you still. You have never been forgotten, and you never will. We often say that the hour of death cannot be forecast. When we say this, we imagine that this hour would be in a distant future. It was never thought we would be here today, April 13th, 2024, celebrating the life of our very own beloved mama, Auntie Mel, Sister Mel, Miss Melda, Mom, Grandma, Great Grandma, Great Great Grandma, Cousin Mel, Mommy Mel, Auntie Meme. Auntie Mel was born in Vadney Melda McIntyre in the community of Morris. Hanover to parents Florence McFarlane and Albert McIntyre. She was born on August 8, 1931. And little did her then elated parents knew of the generous and amiable individual the Lord ordained in their humbled lives. During her childhood years, Auntie Mel attended the Jericho Elementary School. There she was taught various lifelong skills alongside basic academics. Tertiary institutions, you know, congregation, were not obtainable during her adolescence years. And for those of you who really, really knew this Auntie Mel well, would have known that she was the least daunted as her youthful, industrious exuberance shone from her like rays of sunshine. Miss Melda commenced the journey of becoming a seamstress or dressmaker, and this venture was a successful one. Most of us can attest to this because she had sewn attractive baby and adult clothing and doing alteration for different occasions. I usually get it. When I was living with her, when she got to Kingston or Falmouth, she would come back with material and sew my clothes, go to church. Yes. I am still trying, though, to evaluate why if Fadney Melda in a rarity was not entrusted with the voluntary services of being a justice of the peace. <laughs> everyone knew her and she knew everyone. Am I right, church? Yes. yes. Auntie Mel, as she was affectionately called, was one custom built individual by God. Yes. You know when something custom built? Yes. You put the things how you really want it, not so. So she was one custom built individual by God. She was indeed a stalwart in the Retreat New Testament Church, where she served for over 60 years. Miss Melda's presence was felt at all times as she served her God with all her heart and took on the roles of many tasks effectively which were bestowed on her. She was a Sunday school superintendent. 
She served on Pastors Council Board as an advisor. In addition, served as president of the ladies' ministry, also the church's treasurer. Who remembered Auntie Mel's variety store? Which was located in the Jericho Square. It was always creating a buzz. Why? You could have gotten a pin to an anchor there. I still recall that warm, infectious smile she wore on entering her store. Congregation, you better at time when you sat on that accommodating bench. You remember that bench? I don't get it. Yes. Right to the left. Get your seatbelts on and ready for some inspiring words from the Bible. Or you were being assured about the situation. Auntie Mel's advice were positive and heartwarming. Miss Melda was an assertive and empowered woman who spoke with confidence. It didn't matter the time of day or events she attended because her capabilities were pronounced. Auntie Mel's tenacious skills as a family inclined person was more than the ordinary. Her biological children, Peggy, Gurley, Joy, in addition to the many others she nurtured, grandchildren, great-grand, and great-great-grand can immensely reflect at this time. Dear Mama's encouraging words, encouraging words and prayers which kept them. I got a lot of that. How could I not mention yes, me sweet and dandy, yes, me plum jar, yes, putos. What a fat bump you have in your face. And she was ready to squeeze. Her personality was just over the moon. A list of descriptive words we could use to describe Auntie Mel was jovial. She was a fun person, loving, God-fearing, comedian, charming, banker, generous, counselor, peacemaker, and above all, she was very protective of others. Auntie Mel has lived a decorous, humble, and dignified life here on earth. Her passing will be a loss to us. But guess what? The angels in heaven are rejoicing today. She leaves to mourn her children, grandchildren, great-grand and great-great-grandchildren, a host of other family and friends. To Auntie Mel's immediate family, I leave with you St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn for... What would Auntie Mel until we meet again? And I could have gone on and on, but I have to cut off at some point. Yes, Love you, Auntie Mel, in life and Thank you. And we have one other item before we take the prayer of February. You have heard, you would have heard of Auntie Mel. 
love for Claremont. And so at this time we call on the Claremont Testament Church to bring an item. If you, if you have three verses, just sing one on the chorus. And then we'll take the prayer for the bereaved by Reverend Dawson. So clear one in testament church at this time. Retrieve. 
and also another brother, Brother Powell, coming out of um, Manchester with me. Let me on behalf of my wife, Yvette, and daughter, Grace Ann, express our heartfelt condolences to Sister Melda's family and to let you know that your loss is also our loss. Sister Melda was like a mother, a counselor, and a friend to us. Truly, she will be greatly missed. Solomon asks the question, who can find a virtuous woman? For her prize is far above rubies. Mother, grandmother, Sunday school teacher, Sunday school superintendent, choir member, counselor, preacher, pastor's council member, treasurer, and a very good community steward. Sister Melda was all those and more. Sister Melda served the Retreat New Testament Church of God with grace and humility. When I took over as district overseer from Bishop Small, Sister Melda was serving as an officer and the church's treasurer. Brother Bobby was the clerk. After Brother Bobby, Sister Mary, and then Sister Jackson. And during these times, she was very diligent in carrying out her work. Amen. Her best friend was Sister Wilson from the Cascade Church. Yes. At one time, I thought that they were sisters. Yes. They were such loving, caring, praying, praying people. I was greatly encouraged by their dedication and friendship to each other. Sister Melda loved her family, her daughters and grandsons, and most of all, she loved her church. She was a people person and loved to see everybody happy. I can recall many special moments with Sister Melda, but I'm just going to give you two because I know that I am called to pray for the family. She said every woman need a little something at the end of the month, no matter how small. So as they treasure up at the retreat church, Sister Melda, after Brother Bobby prepared a report, and uh, give it to Sister Melda, I would go there to pick up the cash because she was a treasurer. And so when I went there, Sister Melda um, sat me down and she said, Pastor, I have to give you a bit of advice. I might be passing my place, but I have to tell you this. She said, um, Good morning, we, we, we give you a fire retrieve, it's very small. So, at the end of the month, even though Sister Dawson's pay might be bigger than yours, but she's looking for something extra. So, Sister Melda would give me the tithes from the church, what we call the stipend from the church, and then she would put, a, put something extra in an envelope. And she says to me, at the end of the month, when you give Sister Dawson the market money, you put this in her hand. And tell her that she must buy something. This is not market money. This one is that market money. It's for her to buy something nice. Yes. As a pastor, I took the advice. Yes. And I gave Sister Dawson a little something at the end of the month. My God, it worked wonders. <laughs> Fasting service was a joy for Sister Melda. Yes. Fasting service. And um, she would always come early to make sure that the church is clean and everything is in order. Yes. She was a prayer warrior, I know, on right. And she loved to pray and mentor just about everyone. As long as you will listen to her, yes. 
She would mentor you. I remember one fasting that we had at church. I brought uh, a young man, and um, he's of he's a schizophrenia because his mother died of unsound mind, and so she wanted. Um, he was unstable, and he said he wanted some prayer. So I took her, to, took him to church, and I remember that Tuesday while we were in fasting, when you know I called up the people for prayer. The young man came up and Sister Melda went up and hugged that young man. And by hugging the young man, the young man started to cry on Sister Melda's shoulder. But Sister Melda would not let that young man go. And she prayed for the young man. And the young man was crying tears and Sister Melda was shouting. She was, he was crying and Sister Melda was shouting. And my, on our way going home, the young man says to me that, um, Pastor, you know that I feel Jesus in that room, man. I feel Jesus. When you man hold me, I feel Jesus in that big woman. So I went back and I told Sister Melda what the young man said to me, and Sister Melda started crying. She started crying, she started worshiping, she started praising God, and it went on for a while. She was just there giving God thanks. That's the kind of person Sister Melda was. Finally, when Sister Milda started getting her pension, she said to me, I saw a missed call from her one, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. And when I called her back, she spent about two minutes worshiping because she was so happy hearing my voice. And she said to me, she said, Pastor, while I was on my knees praying this morning, the Lord spoke to me. I heard his voice called Pastor Dawson. And he said to me, remember kindness. So that's what the Lord said to her, remember kindness. We talked for a while. And then she said to me, I want you to send me your address. Send me your address. You know your name already. So send me your address so that we can send you a little something. Because the Spirit said not to forget. Kindness. Sister Melda sent me a little something. But then one number was missing out. And when I called Sister Melda to let her know, I thought that she would maybe, you know, just go whatever time is convenient for her. Sister Melda could only the same evening. <laughs> the same evening to get everything rectified. Yes. And so whenever time she calls, she would pray with me and, and, and my wife, as you know, my wife, she has a stroke. And Sister Melda would call us after that she could. And she would go down to, not Western Union, the other one, um, Money Ground. Yes? And every now and then, I could look out. Sister Melda is sending a little change for me and, and my wife. She was always praying to us, and she was always being kind to us. So many things that I could mention today. But my brothers and sisters, we are here today because of this wonderful woman. Yes. Sister Melda was a shining star to me. Yes. She was beautiful, yes. fabulous, passionate, and caring. Yes. Her intelligence and creativity were of the highest standard. Yes. When she sees something to be done at church, she would get it done, yes. as Rev also said. Or she knows someone who can get it done. My yes. brothers and sisters, we can safely say Sister Melda was a virtuous woman, one who, was, one who has found rest and favor with her God. We pray perpetual light shines, continue to shine on her. And may the Lord bless the family. The Lord bless you. I listened to the word of the preacher. And before I pray for the family, I know Sister Melda quite well, and I know that this is what she would want us to do, because I've been her pastor for uh, three years and seven months. Fix up yourself. Yes. I want to pray for all those who are here today and you are not yet fixed up. You have not known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is an opportunity for you to fix it up with Jesus. None of us know what tomorrow may bring. 
none of us. So I want to ensure that before you leave here today, you can say that it was at Sister Melda's funeral that I fixed it up. I'm going to be asking all those who are not safe to stand in the house. All the unsafe, why not you? I'm not going to ask you to come out um, to the front, but I'm going to ask you as long as you are not safe. Uh, whether you're on the outside and you are not safe, Sister Melda's last word to you is fix it up. We are running out of time. So fix it up. So if you are not safe, I'm going to invite you to stand so that we can go to God in prayer for you. Heavenly Father and our God, we humble our hearts before you today. We thank you, Lord, for your daughter. We thank you for the years that you have lent her to us. And Father, here are your children. We are asking you right now that as they stand indicating that they have not known you as Lord and Savior. We are asking, O oh God, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to minister to their heart. Minister to their heart, O oh God, before the time of too late appear. O oh God, you said you rather not the death of a sinner, but it all should come to repentance. So, Father, there are persons standing on the outside. There are persons who are standing on the inside. There are family members who have not yet fixed it up, Daddy. We are asking you today to honor Sister Melda's memory and help the Holy Spirit to fix it up so that they too can be a part of the family and a part of your kingdom. Bless them now, we pray, Father. We ask these mercies in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 I'm going to be inviting the congregation to stand and the bereaved family members to be seated as we go to God on their behalf. So if you are not a family member, we're going to ask you to stand as we honor these wonderful people who over these years have loaned their mother Dear grandma, dear loved one to us. Amen. Amen. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like seas billows roar, whatever my lot the Lord taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Daddy, we come to you one more time and to be off of these, your children who are in mourning. Father, they have lost a mother. They have lost a grandmother. They have lost a great grandmother. They have lost a counselor and a friend. Daddy, we thank you for the years that you have lent Sister Melda to us. And we thank you that we can come to celebrate our life in this way. Oh God, hallelujah, we are asking you that that heavenly blessing that you give to those who are faithful and true that you will bestow it upon, O oh God, her children and grandchildren. O oh God, all that Sister Belda did not get during her lifetime, all the blessings and the favors and the good things, we are asking you, Lord, now that she's not here to inherit, O oh God, that joy and those blessings, that her family, O oh God, will inherit the blessings. May they, O oh God, hallelujah, enjoy favor because of the work that Sister Melda had done. Father, keep them from the hand of the evil one. Cover them from the gunmen. Cover them from the knife men. Cover them from the machete wielding men. Cover them from accident on the road. Cover them, Lord God Almighty, under your wings. Let the anointing rest upon them. Let the anointing rest upon those grandsons that were with Sister Melda. And hear in her pray. Oh, hallelujah. May your Holy Spirit convict them, Lord. May the joys of heaven be around them, Lord. And may they find peace and rest in the heart of sweet deliverance. Grant them favor. Grant them long life. Grant them good health and strength, Lord. Because the daughter will work faithfully for you here on earth. And so, Father, as we're about to go, we are asked that you will go with us. Guide us from here, Lord, to the internment. Guide us to to travel from far and near, O oh God. We are asking you, Father, that as we celebrate with the family today, that we too will be a part of the blessing when it is told upon us. Thank you for hearing us today, Father. Thank you for blessing us. We ask these mercies through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen.
we just ask you to remain in your seats, in your place of where you have been all morning or all afternoon. We ask you to continue to show respect for our life we live. We will recess in this order. I'm asking you to just do this even once in your life. So we will sing with such a hymn when we all get to heaven. The platform party will exit along with the choir. Then the casting and family members and then the rest of you will follow. Order. Let's do this in respect of Antonio's life. I beg of you. I crave your indulgence. Bless me God for benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and the rest of you. The Lord lift up the light of his upon you and give you peace. The recession now here. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed. In the here. Thank you. 